Hi there. Welcome to a new episode of Branding with Friends, the show where branding meets key business topics. Here, you're going to learn tips straight from the experts on everything from self-promotion to thought leadership to inclusivity. We focus on what you can do right now to use these topics, plus the power of branding to attract your ideal clients. I'm your host, branding expert, Annie Franceschi of Greatest Story Creative. I help service business owners tell their story and show their value through clear messaging and consistent branding. I'm also a former Disney storyteller, professional speaker, and the author of two best-selling books, Establish Yourself and Permission to Try. And today, I am so excited to introduce you to one of my dearest friends in the business world. If you struggle with all things delegating, especially the details, you're going to love today's episode. My guest today is the incredible Sarah Potts. Uh, Sarah believes in the power of partnership. In 2014, she founded Joyfully Organized, a strategic team of virtual assistants based in Raleigh, North Carolina, and serving clients nationwide. Through her practice, Sarah is an operations consultant and virtual assistant to coaches, consultants, and service business owners who need the strategy and the support to delegate the details. Having partnered with more than 60 clients to simplify their businesses, she loves helping business owners find the time to live and grow with joy. Um, Sarah's own joy comes from her family, of course, her husband, Colin, kids, Ada and Charles, and their pups. She finds her balance through adventuring outdoors, on the water, and around the world. In fact, she's only got one continent left between before she's been to all seven. Welcome, Sarah. Yay. Thanks for having me. <laughs> I'm so happy. To so we have to ask the first question, which is what is the seventh continent? Africa. Oh, I feel like everybody would guess Antarctica. I know that would be the, I feel like the reasonable guess, but I've actually been to Antarctica. Well, that's the harder one. So I feel like Africa will happen. (laughs) Right. I feel like it will. (laughs) So Sarah and I were just talking everyone that um, Sarah is one of the most overdue guests for Branding with Friends. Now we're, you know, onto a now we're going into like 30 plus episodes at this point, but Sarah helped me develop this. And we wanted to take you behind the scenes today about what it's like to work with a virtual assistant and an operations consultant and how much that can grow your business with joy as joyfully organized so suggests. But um, I am a reformed uh, delegator, someone who really struggled with that. So I'm so excited to have you on the show, Sarah, because I know so many of my clients struggle with this too. And many of my clients have become your clients because of this problem. So you are the perfect person to bring on if you are a coach or consultant or service business owner. And you know, you need to hand off things, but you're not sure how, and you're not sure how to do that, where you can keep making money and keep growing and finding that, that balance in your life. So, uh, I am so excited to have you here. And I know that since we worked together, you have grown your team. How many people on your team as of today? We are currently at eight. So eight people. Oh my I know. Goodness. I feel like just a year ago, it was just like three of us. So we've grown a lot this year. Yes. Awesome. I'm so excited. Well, um, Sarah is part of my team and I'm so proud of, I'm, I'm so a Sarah fan that Sarah's my new book, establish yourself is dedicated to Sarah. And in today's episode, you're going to find out why. So, um, in today's episode, Sarah has brought along three action tips you can use to start delegating more in your practice. Um, if this is your first time watching, keep in mind, we're going to save that third tip for the end. So you get to hear all of the great things Sarah has to share, including a free gift for you guys. So, um, with that, we're going to kick it off with the first thing we need to do. What is the first thing, if we're a coach or consultant, Sarah, that we need to consider or we need to do when it comes to delegating? Yeah. I feel like this is often the step that post people get like stuck on the most is like just figuring out where to start because it feels very overwhelming because people built their businesses themselves and it kind of almost feels like their baby and they don't know where to start. So my biggest tip, and which is why it's my first one, is figuring out where you're spending the most time and energy in your business, especially in the places where you don't want to be expending that energy. So things that don't bring you joy, things that don't light you up, feel, things that you don't feel like you're good at. Um, because like when you're running your business, there's so many things that you have to do to keep it afloat. Things from administrative things, responding to emails and calendar invites, marketing, social media, like paying invoices, sending invoices so you get paid. There's all these things that aren't directly tied um, to like j- why you started your business. So if you start by tracking your time, you can start you can get an idea of where all your time is going in your business. So you can start to figure out, oh, I didn't realize I'm spending this much time doing this specific thing in my business. But going along with that, when you start tracking your time, you'll see all the things that you're doing. And so I know I personally fall into this trap in my business where it's really nice to create a list and I start checking all these things off that I did during a day, but it's all these little things that are taking my energy away from where it should be. 
Um, and so if when you kind of start thinking about all those things that are taking up both chunks of time, but also chunks of energy so that you don't have the, the brain power to be doing like bigger projects and the things that are actually moving your business forward. Yeah. I think that's definitely the danger. Like is, you know, there's a lot of things we can do, but like, what Mm -hmm. should we be doing? And I think kind of what I heard from you suggesting is doing like a time and energy audit. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I'm one of the biggest things I teach people. I think my number one profitability tip is track your time. Yeah. And I'm a reformed time tracker who did not want to do that. Um, And I read, have you read a book? It's called 168 hours. I have not read it. it is on my list though. I've heard about it. You would love it. It's very aligned. And if you're w- watching or listening to this, you would love it too, because it's called 168 hours, you have more time than you think. And it's by Laura Vander- Vanderkam. And it is really great because it teaches you these same, these ideas just across your whole life about mm-hmm. where your time goes is really where your life is going. Uh, and I was like, I didn't believe her. And I started tracking my time just with a pen and paper, but I know you and I, um, mm-hmm. and other people we know we use a tool called toggle. Yep. P O G G L. We'll put it in the show notes. Um, Sarah will take care of that with her team. I will. <laughs> um, but that, you know, it's so eye opening when you start to realize where your time is going because you think, oh, it's just five minutes here or there. But that five minute task was actually taking you two hours and keeping you from spending that two hours on something that you would like really enjoy doing or something you really need to do to mm-hmm. move that business forward. Yeah, exactly. And I think when you start to see how all of those things add up, you start to see why maybe that you don't have energy for some of the things that you want to be doing, because it's all of these little things that you're constantly doing in your business. And I think that, that, you know, it's one of those things, this is one of those unexpected topics that connects to branding. But for me, the branding piece that I see a lot with clients is that they're spending all this time, like thinking about what words should be on their website or what Mm -hmm. colors they're going to use or what font which if you work one time with a professional, with an expert, or invest in that brand identity guide, that brand story guide, that messaging, those fonts, the colors, the logos, that's freeing up your time and your brain to be able to do other things. But if you're constantly kind of doing this as activities, it's going to slow you down from the things you really want to do. So it's one of those indirect, like mm-hmm. branding actually plays a big role in this, that the more you can figure those things out. And I know you guys, and I know you'll speak to this today is having those branding tools also helps you be able to delegate and hand things off because you can just say, Hey, use my brand colors. Hey, use my brand fonts. Instead of having to spend all this time. I know that held me back from delegating, not branding specifically, but feeling like I had to kind of have everything in a row and hand hand a ton of stuff to you and write a tutorial for you when you had the capability of creating the tutorial in the first place. Yeah. And speaking to that branding piece, just because I, I mean, personally have a branding guide and I've worked with lots of people who have a branding guide. It makes things so much easier because you, you do it one time, you have this guide with colors and your, you know, bio and all of these things. It means our team can then just easily go in and take all of those assets and you're not having to think about it. Right. And you're handing the files over. You're not having to constantly have this back yeah, and forth. Exactly. Uh, so that first thing that we should start with, if we're kind of thinking about hiring a virtual assistant or an assistant, some sort of help, we need to do that time and energy audit. We need to know where our time and energy are going. So before we make decisions about it, where is it going? Mm -hmm. What is the second thing we need to do once we've done that? Yeah. And so as you've done that, you'll start to get a bit better picture of kind of where your business is, where your time is. And when you start to look at all of those things, identify what activities in your business aren't directly making you money. So it's building off of that, thinking about how much time and energy is going to all those things like we were talking about, emails and social media. That's not honestly what's bringing in the money. So yes, it's getting your name out there, but people are hiring you if you're a coach or you're a consultant to coach them, to you know consult with them on whatever you know your expertise is, or if you're a graphic designer to you know design their logo. But there are all these other pieces in your business that you have to do to run a business. So what are all of those key activities that are part of your business, but that you don't have to have your direct hand in? And some, for some people, I will say that feels very overwhelming. And so it's not that you even have to delegate the entire, like, I'm going to delegate all of my marketing efforts and not touch anything at all. Well, what pieces of it would be helpful to maybe have someone get started for you or have someone schedule out for you? So there can be pieces of it. It's not the entire portion of an activity. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's going to get very meta for a second, but this show is a really good example of that. Yeah. Um, because I used to write newsletters. Some of you who have been following me for a long time know that I would write a weekly newsletter and I just didn't love that. It wasn't a good fit for me. Um, and I started rethinking that when I was about to go on maternity leave and you and I, Sarah and I um, brainstormed together and we, you know, I created this show called Branding with Friends and now we're 30 episodes, but the show is really um, a, a mashup of all those things. It's not fully delegated, right? Like mm -hmm. I come up with who should be on the show and pitching them and interviewing them. That's the part I like to do. So you and I doing this, this is fun. And the minute I hang up this call, I'm going to send Sarah and her team this recording. I'm going to send a couple notes and then they are going to work their joyfully organized magic and do all the parts I don't want to do. Because I took the time and I also, you know, I created all the templates for it. I created mm -hmm. the format for the show. I, I sort of produced it once, made it repeatable. And then Sarah and her team can easily repeat it for me. I don't have to be the one to do it. So it's a good example of, you know, it's not a direct, you know, revenue generator. This is a free series, of course, um, to, to, to provide content, to teach you what the value of branding is and why it's important. Um, fabulous. Right. So I love it, but I only want to really spend the time on the fun part. Right. So I have designed yeah. a system, but you also helped me not only design that system, but to execute that system, um, which yeah. I'm eternally grateful every time I finish one of these episodes <laughs> that I get to just, you know, a month or two later, it pops up like literal magic. It is the best. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I love that. And like, I mean, I think one of the things you were speaking to, and I'll kind of tie it into branding too, because this is one of the things I hear most often from our clients is they have built their business carefully with a certain brand and a certain vision in mind, and they don't want to lose that by delegating it. And, I, and that's, that is a real concern. And so I think by building templates or only delegating pieces of things that maybe, you know, aren't directly client facing is a really good way to take things off your plate while still having that, you know, high touch point with clients, still maintaining the brand that you've built things along those lines. Yes. And it's always a learning process as we're going to get to shortly. So yeah. we've kind of gone, we've gone through two big things and we have the third thing that kind of brings it all together. But before we go there, I know you brought something along for branding with friends guests. So what would you like to share with us if we're interested in connecting more with you? Yes. So my team and I have built a delegation inspiration guide which basically goes over common um, areas of your business, things like we've been talking about, administrative, marketing, scheduling meetings, different topics. And in each of those topics, we break down common tasks that people are often doing in order to execute those. And so it kind of gives you an idea of where could you start delegating? Like, what are the types of projects that you could start with? So it really just serves as a an inspiration of like, oh, I didn't realize that that is something I could be handing off or this area, these are different things I could be handing off. So it really kind of just gives you a jumping place um, to kind of start thinking about delegating in general. Yes. And it's awesome. And it's definitely born from a lot of the work that you and I did to yeah. bring your story forward. Things I learned directly is you know, with a business like Sarah's, I just didn't know all the things she could do and all the things <laughs> that her team could do. And now she has this incredible free guide that I would encourage you to check out. If you're like, I want to delegate, but how it's going to be this awesome memory jogger of like, Oh, I could hand that off. I could hand this off. Yeah. And I will go ahead and, and, uh, sing your praises that not only can you grab that at the link that we're going to share, but on Sarah's website, set a free consultation with her and her team, because not only does she offer sort of traditional virtual assistant support, she also has project days, which are new, which is like come and knock something out. And she's got every, one of my favorites actually that can expect to branding is if you have branding done with a partner like me or another partner, and you want to roll that out and update it everywhere you're going, update it in your templates, her team can help you do those kinds of things or move your website from another platform. Uh, she also has an amazing virtual assistant hotline. So if you just want a, a line to somebody who's techie, who can help you sort out some of those technical details, she and her team have got you covered. So is that enough of a good plug? for today? Yes. I mean, I appreciate it. I love it. <laughs> so thank you. I mean, I will be very honest and, and any of you who know me, Sarah is probably my number one most referred uh, partner because I love working with her. I've worked with her. I think we've worked together since 2016. Yeah. I was gonna say, I think 16. Yeah. Yeah. So it's 2022 today. Um, so it's been a Years. long, time yeah. and we've both grown our businesses and I, I could not have uh, I would not love my business as much nor would it make as much or be as rewarding to me without Sarah so I love that that's what I love to hear I love <laughs> when people grow their businesses but also businesses that they they enjoy 
but they want to be building. That's so. the piece. And you know, with like establish yourself and all the work and, and you really helped me. We, we brainstormed a lot of establish yourself together, which is why the book is dedicated to you. And I write a lot about this process. So if you want to know more about how I've learned to delegate, certainly read the book because I talk specifically okay. about how to, how I've adjusted and, but just so many of the lessons I've learned about um, not just growing a business, but growing a business in the direction you want to take it. Yeah. So there's so many messages out there to just hustle and do all this stuff. And then you end up with, a life you don't want. And so I think, you know, your, your team is so big on that. My team, mm -hmm. you know, my, my team, which is also you is big on that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm so grateful. So I, I could fangirl all day about Sarah Potts, but, um, if today has gotten you thinking, oh gosh, I'd really like to streamline my branding so I can hand it to somebody like Sarah, we should definitely have a conversation. So you can reach me at greateststorycreative.com for a free consultation. Always happy to talk with you. So Sarah, You've taken us through, it's trying to make de delegation less scary, less intimidating. Mm -hmm. It is really for everybody. You just have to find your style, right? right? So the first tip I know is do that time and energy audit. The second step was to really identify from that. What are those activities that are not directly money-making that could be potential candidates to hand off if you're mm -hmm. not enjoying them? Yep. Right. And what would be the third thing we should keep in mind? Yeah. The third thing I just want to kind of wrap up by saying is you do not have to be perfect to start. And so you're, I mean, the goal is you're hiring someone, whether it's someone like our team or it's a different virtual assistant, or even if you're delegating a different piece of it, like that's not to a virtual assistant, you don't have to be perfect. You're hiring an expert, trust them to help lead you through the process, to help give you strategy and ideas. They've done this with other clients before they have their own tool set that they're coming with. So trust them in their process of walking you, walking you through the process, especially if it's new to you. Yeah. And I am the reform person because I'm, <laughs> I'm weird. You know, some people know they need a VA because they can't do the tech stuff. Right. I'm somebody who can do it all. And I like held it all like this. And mm -hmm. even for the first several years, Sarah will tell you that I worked with her. Mm -hmm. I would have like, I use her for like two hours a month, like just mm -hmm. little things that I felt like I didn't need to train. And I feel like I felt this pressure to be perfect in what I handed off. And I don't, I don't know what happened along the way. I think maybe we had a meeting once and I kind of had this aha of, oh, I can just show up like a mess and tell you what's going on and you can help me make sense of it. Um, I thought I had to be joyfully organized before I worked with you. And that <laughs> yeah. really held me back. And I think when I realized it, it was that, and then Marcy Rader, who's a friend of the show mm -hmm. and um, is amazing. She's a health and productivity expert. Mm -hmm. She told, taught me that when she delegates to her VA, she does a, a video. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, that's so much easier. I thought I was going to have to write out this whole tutorial. So I think that's a little bit of how I got started with you was tasks that I was like, do I really need to be doing this? No. If I shoot five minutes video on Zoom or Loom and I just send it to Sarah, she'll figure it out. Let's try that. And yeah. through doing those things and realizing I didn't have to be perfect, I didn't have to have the plan that I could see Sarah and her team as people who could help me create a plan, that was an enormous shift. Yeah. Enormous. And I remember like I went, now I've gone from two hours to 20 hours on average. There was a, yeah. my favorite month was, I wrote about this in the book that I one time got an invoice for you for 40 hours. Mm -hmm. And I think some people would panic to hear that if you hadn't delegated before, but right. what I got from that was that was 40 hours that needed to be spent in my business that I didn't have to do mm -hmm. that. I got to spend with my husband, with my child, and I got to have fun and I got to sleep and I had a weekend <laughs> and yes. I didn't have to li eat, li live, breathe my business. And I felt free to grow and do the bigger things. That was a exactly. big growth period for me um, when I was developing the book and other things. So mm -hmm. it's one of those, you know, I, if, if you're on the fence, like I will <laughs> gladly like tell you all day long to, whether it's Sarah or another partner, people who yep. have it all together, they're there to help you get it all together. So exactly. um, thank you for converting <laughs> me on how to delegate and teaching me how to yes. delegate. Yes. You know? I mean, and I, I will say, um, I've also had to learn it too, as I've like grown my own business and built a team. Like, so that's why I love to tell people is like, I didn't start out knowing how to delegate either. And so I've learned over the eight years of having my business and growing my team is like how to delegate. So then I can then turn around and work with clients in this, in a very similar way, being like, I've gone through this process. I know it's kind of hard or you don't know where to start, but we're here to guide you through that process and make it less overwhelming. <laughs>
Yes. And I think any partner that's worth their salt is willing to say that. So that's what you want to interview for, whether yeah. anybody on this call or anyone in general, mm -hmm. you want people who are willing to help you come up with a plan that have the experience to help you do that. If they're going, well, what do you want? That may not be the best partner to start with from a delegation perspective. Right. If you know what you want, you're good to go. But yeah. um, Sarah, thank you again for teaching us today how to delegate the details. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. It's been really fun. Oh, I'm so glad this was the long overdue episode. I'm sure you'll be back sometime soon. Um, we hope, Sarah and I hope that you enjoyed yet another episode of Branding with Friends. So many thanks to my very special guest, Miss Sarah Potts of Joyfully Organized. I hope you'll tune in next time when we're going to tackle yet another topic where branding meets business. And until then, I'm Annie Franceschi of Greatest Story Creative. Thanks to Sarah and her team. You can find all of our episodes, branding resources, and more on our website, greateststorycreative.com. Stay awesome.